Hey guys, today we are going to talk about verbal agreements, also known as oral agreements. Are they valid? Yes. Verbal agreements are valid in law, okay, as long as the four requirements of contract law are satisfied. Number one, there is an offer. Number two, there is an acceptance of the offer. Number three, there's intention to create legal relations. Number four, there, are, there is consideration moving from the two parties. There are many lawsuits that have uh, arisen over verbal contracts. Uh, the lawsuits that I've done that involve verbal contracts usually uh, involve a main written contract, okay? But subsequently along the line, the parties uh, um, entered into verbal agreements to add this, to add, to subtract this, to change this, to change the payment plan, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I've never sued someone purely on a verbal contract because it is uh, very difficult to prove a, a, to a verbal contract. When it comes to lawsuits, without documentation of the contract, it just becomes a matter of he said, she said. She said there is a contract, he said no, there wasn't a contract. Or there may not even be a contract to begin with. A party who claims that there is a verbal contract and wants to enforce the terms must be able to prove the terms to the, of the contract to the satisfaction of the court. The plaintiff, the person suing, may present uh, evidence of him performing services under the verbal contract. He can uh, show that he delivered goods, okay? Uh, under the verbal contract. Proof of payments, for example, bank transfers, issue of checks, bank statements, can so, and can also show that some kind of agreement was reached between the parties. Also, written communication such as emails, WhatsApp messages referring to the verbal contract can be used as evidence to show that there is a, a, a verbal contract existing. If anyone else was present during the uh, time the verbal contract was uh, entered into, these people can also be uh, asked to uh, attend court by way of a subpoena okay, to, to act as witnesses to the verbal agreement. They have to be cross-examined by the part, both parties' lawyers to see who, which party is lying about the, whether there is a verbal agreement or not. So as you can see, verbal agreements are very dangerous and hard, difficult to prove. So it's, it's always best to have uh, an agreement in writing. If you don't want to spend too much money on a lawyer to draft a proper agreement, you can just, you know, draft an email to the other person stating, stating the, the agreed terms in bullet point form, okay? What you agreed, put it in bullet point form and then with a comment at the end saying, please reply uh, if you agree to the above terms. And you email it to the other party and the other party replies, yes, I agree to the above terms. Voila, you have a valid contract, a written contract. You don't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be drafted by a lawyer and it's better than a verbal agreement. Now, another thing I should mention is Section 5 of the Civil Law Act. Section 5 of the Civil Law Act provides that certain contracts must be in writing, uh, especially those uh, contracts relating to immovable property, that means HDB flats, condominiums, houses, as well as, as, well as marriage. You can, you can Google Section 6 of the Civil Law Act and take a look at the contracts that need to be in writing. So thanks for watching this video on verbal agreements.